What's up guys, Axis here and welcome back to the second part of my two part intro tutorial. Now in this part we're going to be in After Effects uh, and I'm just going to be going over how to composite this last part of the uh, kind of process of making an intro. So I'm just going to put up on the screen a couple of plugins that you'll probably need because, uh, well, you don't need them but I'm going to be using them. I'll also provide some alternatives like the um, like ones that are already included in After Effects but otherwise you can download those plugins and then you know follow along exactly the tutorial that I'm doing here. So other than that let's get into it. So open up After Effects and then do Control i to import your uh, intro. So just just go to the location where you actually um, saved it. So if you saved the uh, compositing file which included all the um, uh, all the cameras and the lights and stuff then you'll have this folder here, uh, or this file here that says AEC, which is an After Effects folder or file. Just double click on it. And as you can see, we've got a, com uh, a comp file here. So if we double click on this comp, you can see that we have our intro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a black solid with Control Y, and then I'm just going to go and put it to black. And then we're going to put this in the background and I'm going to call it background and then we're going to do control alt y to create an adjustment layer put it to the top and I'm just going to call it color correction so now that we've got that what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some motion blur using uh, real smart motion blur and then just put that over it and I'm going to set the uh, blur amount to 1 and as you can see, if I just toggle this on and off, you'll see that there's motion blur added to this. Which makes it a bit more realistic, because obviously if you're filming with the camera, you're going to get motion blur unless you've got a really high shutter speed. So uh, we're just going to go to the point where we want to kind of add our color correction now. So I'm going to go to looks. I'm going to be using Magic Bullet looks uh, by Red Giant. Uh, and then you can you can go over here to choose um, like a, a color correction that's preset like uh, I've got a color correction pack that I'll have in the description but I'm just gonna go and try and create one so if I just go to post I'm gonna drag in curves and then uh, crush the uh, darker parts and then bring up the light parts and then I'm just gonna get 3B colorista and then I'm going to get kind of a, a blue tint on it. Uh, I'm just going to leave the shadow um, normal. I might even add a bit of chromatic aberration, so just a tiny bit, not too much. You Obviously you don't want to go overboard and put this like up to there. So um, I'm just going to go and mess about with uh, some of the stuff because for you guys, um, it might be a bit different uh, because you're you might have a kind of a different lighting setup, so you might want to do things a bit different from me. But I'm just going to add a uh, lens blur. I'm going to turn up the the um, quality of it. I'm going to get a vignette and then turn down the strength. And I'm going to get this haze slash uh, flare. And then I'm going to get rid of the uh, box size and then reduce the um, kind of overall size of it. You could even change the color of it. So I might go with a purpley kind of blue color. And uh, then I'm going to get some flares. They are not really showing up. So if we decrease the threshold, you see that these will start to appear. Uh, and then I'm going to add a diffusion. And I'm going to add a white one, then I'm going to add another one that is going to be blue. Uh, and let's, let's, let's see a couple of other things. Pop is also quite good if you just increase it a bit. That can, uh, can it, ju it just makes your scene kind of uh, highlight a bit and uh, see all those like bevelly spots where they catch the light. Uh, that will also help with showing those and like bringing those out from the scene. And then I might also add an S curve because those look quite nice as well. Um, maybe also increase the saturation. I don't know how this will look, or decrease it depending. You can have a black and white scene. But I'm just going to take out the uh, 
the hue and saturation. So as you see, that's quite a clean colour correction. I mean, you can go quite a bit overboard with this. And I'm also going to add some particles. You can also, um, if you've got my motion pack, which is in the description, you can also just drag in my flares uh, or my, um, what you call them, particles that I have, which are in um, stocks and I think it's particles. There we go. So there's the particles, or you can use Particular, which is a paid plugin. Just create a solid and then add Particular to it. And this will make it interact with the scene because you've got a camera here. So if I go into the emitter and then change it to box, since this is a camera, then you have to kind of drag this about and then you get the one on the scene. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the emitter size, X, Y, and Z. So this fills the whole scene. Like so. Go into particle and uh, you'll see that there's going to be like a bit of pop in at the start. We just have to drag this over here and then drag the rest there. So we've already got it going. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the opacity over life. And then I'm going to click this one that fades in and fades out. And you could also change the color if you want, but I'm just going to leave it like that. And then go into rendering, motion blur and then put it on, and then put subframe sampling on, and turn it to 15. So now that we're going to have some motion blur on the particles as well. It's looking quite nice now. So I might also want to add um, some kind of camera, camera kind of depth of field here. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to create a kind of um, uh, something to go across it. So if we go and create a black solid, then get the rectangle mask tool, uh, and then we'll create another solid, and I'm going to turn this one into a white solid. And then I'm going to do this with the mask tool and then open up the uh, mask options and feather it. And then we're going to select both of these, right click, uh, pre-compose and then go to move all attributes to new composition. And then we're going to just hide this and then we're going to drag the camera lens blur onto the, um, the um, what do you call it, uh, adjustment layer. And we are going to go and then use a layer and we're going to use a pre-comp one. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale up the background. So there we go. And then what you're going to want to do is if you just mess about with the mask on this, you can choose what bits ha get highlighted. So as you can see that top bit's um, blurring it out. And then if we go into the uh, blur focal distance, if we put this up to 255, you can see that it will change what part, it, uh, part it focuses on and you can animate this if you wanted so I might do that start at 255 or 252 and then I'm going to bring this down to 0 and I might even put the blur radius to 3 so we don't get kind of it too blurry and then as a finishing touch what you could do is you could add some flares if you wanted so I've got those in my pack as well, or you can use optical flares by Video Copilot. So I'll just add one here. And I might animate this across the screen, so if we go to the start, position X, Y, and then we're going to go to the end and we're going to drag this over here. And obviously you can change the color, the uh, brightness and the scale. So yeah, you could also add uh, smoke layers, all that good stuff. You could even add um, a displacement map to when this part opens up here, which I might do. So you get a black solid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask, hold shift when you're doing this to create a perfect circle and then we're going to switch on the title action safe 
double click on the mask so then you can see the anchor point which will be in the middle and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this mask here with control D set it to subtract and then we're going to decrease the mac, uh, the mask uh, expansion and then we go to the point that you want and then select both of these mass expansions click the keyframe and we're going to drag this all the way down until it's just out the scene and then we're going to go to the point where this completely opens up and we're going to make sure this goes all the way out the scene like so and I'm going to pre-compose this and make sure all of this is in a new composition and I'm going to go into it go back a bit. If, if your whole scene is black what you can do is you can click this toggle transparency grid which will then make the uh, background show the transparent boxes <coughs> and I'm gonna get a displacement, uh, turbulence displace drag this onto here, turn down the size slightly and then I'm gonna turn up the turbulence uh, now when we use this it's going to look quite uh, rough so what we do is we click F here to bring up all the uh, the feathering options and I'm going to feather this slightly so we've got that and then we go back into our first comp and then as you can see we've got this big uh, mess and what we're going to want to do is we're going to put this uh, displacement map onto the color correction uh, layer and then we're going to set this to the black comp you can rename these if you want but I'm going to hide this layer and then as you can see we've got this displacement effect which you can actually um, increase or disc uh, decrease on the X and Y and you see we've got something a bit over the top where <laughs> it's kind of tearing the screen in half so as you can see it's got kind of a weird um, effect like there's maybe some heat coming off this or something I don't know If you wanted to make it look a bit uh, less kind of uh, harsh, what you could do is you could double click on this and then switch on motion blur. Make sure you click both of these on and if those options aren't there then click toggle switches and you'll be able to uh, choose that option. And uh, also remember to save this because you don't want to lose it if it just, uh, if something happens and it shuts down so. Can't spell. So there we go, we've got basically the uh, kind of main part of the scene. What we can do is since I've added quite a lot of elements, you're going to see that the uh, the flare is now quite bright. So if we just uh, increase the threshold, then we're going to get less flares. But if, you know, if you're wanting more flares, then keep them in. And then I'm going to click Control A on all this, right click, and then go pre-compose. <laughs> and then we're going to do some camera shakes so if we go to the start I'm going to go 102 scale so that uh, the uh, box doesn't go out of the scene click P click on positions key, uh, keyframe and then go to the end at the um, at the end of it so just click the end key or you can drag your uh, kind of guide to the end and then select both of these with uh, just dragging and then clicking or just clicking and then dragging and then over here in the wiggler section we can choose the frequency and the um, the magnitude of the wiggle. So I'm just going to leave it default and click apply and as you can see we're going to get all these keyframes here. And you're not going to be able to see it instantly but uh, I might do a little RAM preview and then I will just skip to that part. Right so uh, the After Effects render has completed so if I just click on this window now that it will actually just play this back. That's actually looking quite nice. So um, now that we can actually start rendering it, uh, I have one issue though. You see back here we have the uh, kind of transition from the just the normal like plane to the uh, black background. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to duplicate this background and then just scale it up. And then maybe also click T to 
make it uh, kind of less visible. But from here on, it's absolutely fine. You could also add something that, like, when it zooms in here, you could make the uh, you could keyframe kind of a blur. So just come on and then fade out over like a few or uh, a few seconds or just like one second. So yeah, that that would also be quite cool. But I think that is good enough uh, for this kind of tutorial here. So uh, I'm just going to render this, and um, I think, yep, so it's control shift and slash to render something, just if you didn't know, because it's kind of a weird shortcut, but if you want to just do it without the shortcut, it's in somewhere in here, I think, composition and, I don't know, just use that shortcut, <laughs> uh, add to render queue, there we go. So yeah, I'm just going to show you some kind of uh, simple render settings if we go into the output module, change the format, uh, definitely don't use AVI, I definitely um, avoid that, I, you know, most kind of uh, projects that you do, you wouldn't use AVI just because it's uncompressed and to be honest it doesn't look that good. Uh, but if you wanted like high quality, but you didn't want, um, but you wanted kind of some compression, and obviously it can be played in a lot of different players, so uh, I'm going to use QuickTime. Um, so yeah, and then I'm going to go to Format Options and change it to Animation, because this allows for um, transparency if you needed it. Obviously it's not in here, but like you can use it if you want to. And put the quality to 100, um, and switch the audio off, because some of your, some of your footage uh, or stocks that you might have in here um, might have sounds, even though they don't if you know what I mean, because sometimes when you render WMV, uh, Windows Movie, uh, Windows Media uh, Video I think it is, I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it just rends with, renders kind of a, an audio file with it even though, or even if there is no kind of audio that's actually included in the file. Um, so yeah, quick time and then audio off, and if you're looking to do um, transparency then switch it to RGB plus alpha which will include the alpha layer in the background and all these files should be all these um, options or presets should be fine and then just output this to wherever you want and then click render and then what you can do is also if you click caps lock it will stop the preview which will reduce the RAM that you're using See, also there's a RAM indicator down here. If I switch this back on, the RAM will increase. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Remember to leave a like and share this video uh, with you know your friends and stuff if you're wanting to uh, learn how to do intros. I hope this helped you, and you know link some stuff to me if you've watched the tutorial through and you've yeah done something that's kind of based on this. Um, then just send it my way and I'll give my opinions on it. So yeah, apart from that, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next tutorial.